Are there natural treatments for osteoporosis? Let's talk about it. Did you know that osteoporosis affects one in three women over the age of 50 and one in five men? Bone loss contributing to increased risk of fracture can be very debilitating. Osteoporosis means you've lost enough bone density that you have an increased risk of fracturing your bones. The bones that are most likely to fracture are in your vertebrae and your hips. Although all your bones are susceptible, a hip fracture when you're older can be really devastating, leaving you bedridden for long periods of time, which increases the risk of blood clots, bed sores, and pneumonia. Elderly people can die from the complications of hip fractures. When your vertebrae start to fracture due to osteoporosis, it can cause not only a loss of height, but your vertebrae start compressing your disc, causing severe pain and nerve issues. Yet osteoporosis is preventable. Osteoporosis is more common over the age of 50 because of the hormonal changes that occur at midlife. When your sex hormones start to decline, it affects your bone density. It's important to understand how your bones are formed so you really can understand why keeping your hormones balanced is so important. First of all, Estrogen is the hormone that prevents excessive bone loss, while progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, and human growth hormone all help to grow new bone. Bone cells are called osteocytes, and there are two types. One type is osteoclast, which resorb old bone. It's necessary for your bone to restructure constantly, so every 12 months you have a whole new skeleton. Osteoclasts eat away the old minerals in the bone and the amino acid matrix that holds the minerals together in order to help you build new bone. Osteoclasts are inhibited by estrogen. The other osteocyte are osteoblasts. Osteoblasts lay down new bone by forming the amino acid matrix, which is like a web that holds the minerals to create the bone density. Osteoblasts are stimulated by hormones, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, and growth hormone. Deficient hormones affect your bone density and cause osteoporosis. But there are other factors. Your lifestyle has a huge impact on your bone density. Exercise can increase your bone density. If you've been sedentary most of your life, you're going to have less bone density than if you were active. When astronauts leave the gravitational pull of Earth's orbit, they start losing bone because gravity itself helps increase bone density. That's why the best exercise to increase bone density is weight-bearing exercises like walking, running, dancing, jump roping, and weight resistance exercises where you lift weights or use your own body weight as resistance also helps to build bone. Your diet plays a huge role in bone density too. By the time you're in your early 30s, you've laid down the maximum amount of bone that you'll have for the rest of your life. If you've had poor nutrition in childhood as well as in your young adulthood, you're going to have less bone density than if you would have had proper nutrition. So if you start off with low bone density, then you'll definitely develop osteoporosis by midlife. So what's a healthy diet for healthy bones? Bones and the hormones that influence their growth need lots of nutrients. A plant-based diet like the Mediterranean diet provides enough micronutrients, including vital bone minerals. Make sure you're getting a variety of fruits, vegetables, and legumes in your diets to help increase your mineral intake. While calcium is the most important mineral for bone density, there's also other minerals like magnesium, boron, and phosphorus that help to build bone and are found in a variety of plant foods. You need an adequate amount of protein, at least a half a gram of protein per pound of lean body mass, every day to provide the amino acids to create the bone matrix. Certain foods can contribute to bone loss. For instance, excessive soda intake can actually increase the risk of bone loss because the phosphorus in the carbonation will start to leach the calcium out of your bones. And we also know that people who eat a very acidic diet, meaning they eat mostly sugar, too many processed foods, and too much meat, have lower bone density than people who eat a more plant-based diet. Best sources of calcium are from dairy products, although you can get calcium from certain plant foods, like leafy greens, but they need to be cooked for the best absorption of minerals. Small fish with bones like sardines are an excellent source of calcium as well. 
You also need to make sure that your body's making enough vitamin D. Eating vitamin D is not adequate as most vitamin D added to food is D2 and your body needs active vitamin D3 and cannot convert D2 into D3. You may need to take a vitamin D3 supplement if your vitamin D levels are low. While anything under 30 is considered low serum wise, keeping your vitamin D around 50 is better for your hormone health. Vitamin D helps act as a pro-hormone, helping hormones to get into your cells. Vitamin D also helps to protect your bones and helps your immune system. So how do you measure bone density? Bone density is measured by an x-ray called a DEXA scan. DEXA scans measure the amount of calcium in your vertebrae as well as your hips and compare it to other people of your gender, your height, and your ethnicity. Certain ethnicities tend to have lighter, less dense bones. If you start to lose a little bit of bone, it's called osteopenia, which can progress to osteoporosis if we don't stop the loss. DEXA scans are usually done every 12 to 18 months. Doing them any sooner than that will not really show any changes of any of the intervention you've done to try to increase your bone density. Now there's an, a way to measure active bone loss. It's called a urine crosslinks test and it measures the amino acid crosslinks of the bone matrix that are being leached out rapidly due to excessive bone loss. It's a single urine sample that can be done more frequently, about every eight weeks or so, to be sure that you're actually stopping bone loss. Estrogen therapy is key to stopping bone loss. And there are drugs called biophosphonates that also can help to reduce bone loss. Now we talk a lot about how to balance your hormones to prevent and treat osteoporosis in our hormone support group, which you can access through our free hormone reboot training. Besides balancing their hormones, I make sure my patients with osteoporosis are eating a super healthy diet. I prefer they get most of their calcium from their diet, at least 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams a day. And if they need more, we may supplement them with about 500 milligrams or less of calcium. We make sure their vitamin D levels stay around 50, and if necessary, supplement them with a triglyceride form of vitamin D. We repeat the urine crosslinks test to be sure they're not actively losing bone. Estrogen stops bone loss in women, while testosterone can actually help men because it can be converted into estrogen. We then start working on bone building through exercise as well as hormone replacement therapy. We make sure they're making or getting adequate amounts of progesterone, DHEA, testosterone, and human growth hormone. I never prescribe human growth hormone without making sure that my patients are getting the other hormonal bone building blocks because we have to make sure they're also doing weight bearing and weight resistant exercise or the growth hormone will actually build things that we don't want like tumors instead of growing bone. Now we always supporting their hypothalamus with Genesis Gold because without hypothalamic support, we have to use a lot more hormones to get their bones healthy again. I've had patients be able to reverse their bone loss with hypothalamic support, hormone supplementation, as well as an intense exercise and dietary regime. With the right support, you can get those bones back. I'll see you in the next video.